All right, we are at Anime Los Angeles, and we have guest Calhi Bear with us today. And we would like to talk to you about the current state of the anime industry in the wake of Bandai's current situation. All right, Kyle, let's start. I mean, what factors do you think contributed to this whole demise of Bandai? I've, uh, I've heard for years that um, fans weren't happy with their price structure and uh, that maybe some bad business decisions were kind of behind the restructuring. Some people kind of exaggerate and say, oh, they've gone under. Well, they're not gone under. They're actually restructuring and focusing on digital distribution and, right. and everything, which is wise in the Internet age to kind of refocus that. But I think at the very start of it, the focus, I mean, of any anime studio has to be how can we make back our investment? And when dollars are lost, you look at the sales figures um, and the shows are pirated and, and everything. The fans, obviously, not every single person, and we're not going to sit here and wag our finger um, or anything like that, but the, the, uh, the desire to watch a show, I think, in general, obviously dissipates at least a little for a lot of people. Once you've seen it, then you say, okay, well, I don't need to buy it. I had, I had someone send me an email just the other day saying, um, I feel okay walking into Barnes & Noble and just reading manga all the way there so I don't have to buy it. It's like, that's the same thing as pirating. You're, you're getting the benefit of a product without paying for it. And, um, it, and since anime manga is such a niche part of the entertainment world, that's why it's so important that the fans come together and support the artists so that the money goes back into the system and they can um, continue to flourish and make more of the stuff that the fans are obviously very passionate about. So while a lot of people are coming forth saying, hey, it's not piracy, quit using that as a scapegoat, I still say piracy is one of the main issues. It's not the only one, but I think it's a major one. Yeah, it's probably the bigger one out of all of them. It, out of everything through the years, Genion, the, the restructuring of ADV, some studios even back in Japan. I know that Japan for many years has been afraid of the internet and everything, but uh, I think they're seeing. Uh, we've come to this point where the U.S. side of it and the Japanese side have to really work together to not only combat piracy, but I mean, it's just a world market sort of deal to get shows to the fans as quickly as possible in an official capacity, shorten the home video release window, because you never can get rid of fan subs 100%, yeah. but, uh, or piracy, or torrents, but if you can nip it in the bud somehow, get the, get the ad streams and all that stuff, the, the non roll ads, the yeah, absolutely. Viz, Crunchyroll, Funimation, they're, they're leading the charge and they're showing it's like digital distribution is the future. And uh, while there is a segment of fans that still like having a hard disc on the, on, the, on the shelf and having a physical collection, I think most people are, are easily uh, persuaded or influenced by a digital collection, which is much more convenient. I know that personally for me, I read comics digitally now on my iPad. I haven't gone to the comic book store in, 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 in many months, and I know that's bad for a Ma and Pa comic book shop, but... It's nice to have it there digitally, yeah, just ready to read. takes up a little bit of space on your hard drive. When you're done reading it, delete it, and if you want to read it again, just re-download it. So you don't own anything physical, but... I mean, and Viz has the same thing. Viz has an app. You can download manga for super, super cheap, so... It'll all work out eventually. I, th I think it will. We're, we're in the wild, wild west days. People are still trying to figure it out. you got mainstream TV networks and everybody you know, claiming that, oh, there's no money in advertising, there's no money or, or internet, there's uh, uh, in internet revenue. Yeah. Uh, the residuals that actors make for internet streams are much, much less than network. The, so, yeah, it's, it's... It's a very experimental phase. Totally, totally. All right, so next question. I mean, how do you feel about the fans who just absolutely refuse to watch dubs, like the ones who just want to watch it when it's streaming straight from Japan right after it airs? Well, I understand that fans are very, very passionate and they want to watch the show as, as soon as it airs on TV, uh, but they they need to try and get over the, the, the selfish factor of, uh, of entitlement. Um, 
and some people don't see it as entitlement, but I mean, if you think that somebody owes you something just because it's online, uh, you really gotta really rethink that. Um, they might view it differently if they were the studio that invested millions of dollars in creating a product to put it out there, knowing that it is a business. Anime and manga is a business, and you have to make a profit to continue and sustain the business. That's just basic common sense for any business. Um, but if you put it out there and it's totally distributed for free, oh man, you get nothing on that end. There's no return on your investment. There's a little bit. There's always the fans that are, God bless them. They're going to support it when the when the official product comes out. Mm -hmm. And then, so what do you do when there's a show or a product that's too uh, niche or, or anything that, that people are saying, okay, it's not going to sell a lot. It may have a ten to 20,000 people who are diehard, but the rest of the fan base doesn't care. What do you do? Well, you don't license it, and then it ends up being torrented in anyway. Yeah. Or like some studios like Sentai or Media Blasters, they just release it sub because they do selective dubbing. Right, yeah, and, and investing in a dub is very, very expensive. I mean, if people don't like it in English, that's a personal choice, and that's fine. That's fine. Um, but the companies need to make back their money, especially on shows that do get a dub. And it's really also sad that that Bandai has, has, is having to do this because now it's going to be harder to get the shows on disc anyway. You're going to have to import the continuing future volumes of some of the shows, like right. Gundam Unicorn and everything. And that's pretty disheartening for fans who started a show and now they can't finish it. Without importing. Without importing. Or, as most people will probably be too tempted, they'll just go back and just watch the fan subs again and then no money and then we're back to square one. Mm. So hard. Yeah, it's harsh. It's harsh. Um, I always tell people that I'm not. Uh, I'm not judging them. I'm not judging the person. I'm judging the act. I'm judging the behavior. Mm -hmm. It's like think about the side effects of it. I mean, has everybody downloaded yet? Everybody's guilty of downloading and sampling and watching and. That's kind of where the fan base is. It's like, I don't want to pay these ludicrous prices for something that I don't know if I'm going to like it or not. So the industry has to meet them halfway. It's like, all right, here, here's the first volume. But after that, know that you're going to have to, to buy it. Exactly. And uh, I think that's fair. It's like if when you watch a show and <coughs> there's ads in it that you can't skip, I mean, hey, you're watching it for free. Yeah, so this is what you wanted. Tolerate some ads. And then you know that because you've had to do that, oh my God, first world problem, you had to sit there and watch a commercial for 30 seconds, that uh, at least that money is channeling back into the industry. And hopefully fans will uh, help spread the word. I've gotten some really encouraging, supportive remarks from my video blog on YouTube that I stuck up and I almost didn't do it because I thought, this is all common sense to me. I've, I've told people this for a long time at conventions, but I thought, wait a minute, I've never done it in one place concisely on, a, on the internet so I can just reach a lot of people at one time. So it's one of my most popular video blogs that I have on my channel and it's like, I'm very happy about that. It's gotten a lot of hits and actually not too bad on the criticism part. I mean, I figured it'd be Which a great. bunch of flames, you know, flame wars, insults and all bunch that of, unintelligent stuff. Yeah, yeah. And a couple of people taking me to task, but I mean, and I understand their point of view, but just trying to open some eyes and open some minds. Yeah, like what Stephanie Shea and Steve Bloom are doing on their Facebooks. Absolutely. I think it's really important that uh, the critics need to look past that, no, we're not just saying this because we're looking out for our jobs, because we get paid so little as it is to dub anime. We're looking out for the fans, honestly. It's like, hey guys, guess what? The warning sign's there. We've got yet another American distributor gone under or restructuring severely due to nobody buying the product. You know, and you know, if it comes to this, I don't think it will. Anime will never 100% go away. But if it did, and the fans would just go, where's the shows? Where's everything? I loved anime. Don't you remember when you could walk into uh, Best Buy and pick up a DVD? Can't do it anymore. Or what if Japan can't even afford to invest in digital streaming and you can't watch the shows on Netflix or iTunes? Back in the dark ages sooner or later. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So 
we want to knock nip that in the bud and keep the fans um, aware of and that their behavior does have an uh, a direct effect on the market. Um, Greg Ayers, another voice actor, you know, with ADV Inflammation, has said a, a great thing. He said, this is the one aspect of the industry that the fans can affect and can be in control of. There's so many other things. Business decisions like price you know, strategy and all that, that's all up to the distributor. Fans don't have a say. Fans actually do have a say when it comes to piracy. You can make a conscious decision to go into an anime convention, go into a store or online rental or, or retail and purchase an official product. Right. And um, I'm hoping more people will continue to do that. I really hope so, too. Absolutely. So, do you think fans will start buying more content now that all these warning signs have been pointed out to them by people like you, Stephanie Shea, Steve Bloom, Tony Oliver, Karen Strassman, and all these people? Uh, all we can do is hope. You know, it's a it's a wait and see sort of deal. You know, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. I, you know, I had people tell me on email after I told them, it's like, you can say you don't have money to the nth degree, but... If you pay $8 a month to subscribe to Netflix, you're going to have all these shows on demand to watch whenever you want. iTunes is like 2 bucks an episode. When people are complaining about, oh, there's only three episodes and it's $20 or $25 a disc, I can't afford it. It's like, all right, well, rent it. Stream it. There, there's legit outlets to, to do it legally. And uh, there's no reason to, to not do that anymore. So hopefully people will listen and they'll uh, support the shows and the products that Japan continues to make because I know they love them. And uh, better I, way to show up. Yeah, yeah. I love being a part of the industry, and I hope that I get to dub more shows. But uh, obviously, that's not going to happen without uh, the fans uh, choosing to be uh, uh, proactive about this. That's good. All right, thank you for your time, Kyle. Sweet. And have a nice rest of your con. Thank you very much.